اوكي سو رح رح نقرا هاي السلايدات هاي موضوع السلايدات عن ال ال دبليو اي بي سو اي جس ال دبليو اي بي از ا تايب اوف يعني وايرلس يعني اي ثينك هاي السلايدات كونتينيوينج من سلايدات نمبر 3 بس uh, we're just gonna read it as is ففي عنا ال WEP attacks ال web is short for um, خلنا نشوف what is it short for it's uh, wired equivalent privacy يعني it's a type of uh, uh, privacy used أو security protocol used for the wireless network And it depends on the key. فلازم نعرف إنه it depends on a key. And آه okay types of web attacks. في عنا types of attacks بيكونوا dependent on a key on key. فا في attacks بتكون إنه ما بتحتاج ما بحتاج يعملوا recovering the key. وال other type بيكونوا they recover the key. أو ممكن الأتاك تكون depending on communication إنه ما يكون في communication with the access, control, uh, access point uh, أو ممكن تكون dynamic بتكون involving communication with the access point طيب ال general steps for the attack on the WEP which is actually not used anymore uh, أول إشي لازم يكون عندنا اللابتوب اللي هو الكالي لينوكس اي ثينك خلينا اشوف النوتات سو ات 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 يو هاف تو هاف يور اكويبمنت اللي هو الكالي لينوكس واللابتوب والنتورك كارد اللي هو ممكن يكون فيرتشوال ماشين virtual box أو in a USB الكالي Linux ولازم يكون عنا الراوتر تبع ال web web router و we have to find target air dumping uh, I think هذه ال command عشان ندور على ال هاي so we have to actually connect to the uh, Wi-Fi access point Or we we go into monitor mode, so I think uh, this is the monitor mode where we air mon. It means monitoring, and aero dumping. Or then wait or make the target network busy. Airplay NG. I think we have to inject data, and then we start cracking from the captured data. We start to read some data from. يعني, uh, I guess we we receive packets of data, so we we run this command and uh, in this way. We can hack by cracking uh, the web from the uh, data. Type the brute force and dictionary attack. So the brute force, I know I know in her trying all possible values uh, of a password. يعني مثلا, if we have a key that has a length of eight, يعني eight bits. And each bit can be zero or one, so we have two two possible bits for eight eight bits. So we have two to the power of eight uh, search space. This should, this is the search space space for the brute force attack. Um, so هنا بيقولنا إن the web relies on the difficulty of discovery of key, of the key through a brute force attack. و الدكشنري اتاك بيستخدم مور مور كومن 
more common يعني, uh, passwords and they like use uh, use these already يعني يعني أنا مثلا ممكن شركة حدا uh, ي, ي, يعملها هاكين ويعمل ريليس للباسوردز اللي كانت موجودة بهاي ال يعني الباسوردز اوكي فهم ايش بيستخدموا؟ بيستخدموا هذا الداتا بيس اللي بيحتوي على الباسوردز اللي اوريدي ريليسد لانه اتس مور لايكلي انه الشخص بيستخدم باسورد اوريدي موجودة يعني لان الباسوردز ار يوجولي نوت ترولي راندوم سو ذي يوز ا ديكشنري اند Uh, it has less search space. يعني it doesn't try every single possibility. Um, so it's quick because it takes less than a month. But it's considered يعني, a lot of time. Uh, steps هو إنه uh, we capture only two uh, encrypted packets. Then try to decrypt it using the captured initial initialization vector. Or an IV and a potential key. Uh, verify the decrypted ICV. Who uh, with CRC? I, I don't really know what ICV and CRC are meant. I think Hadi he an error check. I'm sure. I think he is cyclic redundancy check. Ish the heck? Where shall I see he? I see he. Okay. Uh, okay. So these are the steps. Anna, this type of attack, the FMS attack. For this attack, it's static. فايش قلنا what does static mean uh, it, it, uh, it doesn't use communication so I think it's offline and it's what they rely on the weakness of the RC4 algorithm uh, لانه عندهم invariance weakness so عندهم large classes of weak keys and IV weakness who uh, so an attacker can re-derive the secret part by analyzing the initial word ف, uh, يعني it's not truly random لأنه the initial word has uh, conveys some information about the second the FMS discovered several forms of the 3 byte IV yield predicted result 5 uh, result Uh, 5% of the time and almost perfectly random all other times so uh, when they use this uh, IV uh, the result is predicted by 5% so uh, we can reveal the first unknown byte of the secret key The process would then be repeated for each additional unknown byte of the secret key until the entire secret is revealed. So if we know the first byte, we have an idea what the second byte is, then we consider the second byte as the first. Yani we use it as input as the first, then we can know the third byte. Zayhek. So it requires actually 9 million uh, packets, which is 1 to 2 hours of traffic. The Coric attack is uh, improved FMS attack. It's also static and it has a key recovery. Hadi with key recovery. 
So I did static with key recovery. I had the command static with key recovery. And it's actually extended to 16 more correlations. They found more correlations. So the first few bytes of RC4 key, 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 key stream, and the next key byte, fee correlation between them. They reduced the number of packets needed to 700,000. يعني تخيلوا من تسعة مليون ل seven hundred thousand ل what is this number? I think it should be seven hundred thousand with a success rate of over fifty percent. And then we have a chop chop attack. هادي بدون chop chop هادي a chop chop attack. It's the same as the correct, but it does not recover the key. It just reveals the message, so it doesn't crack the key. It exploits the ICV vulnerability. Let's search this. So integrated check value. I guess this is what is the ICV. The integrated check value. Um, process of tra uh, truncation of packets while keeping them still valid. Uh, what does truncation mean? I don't know. Search. So cutting short. So cutting short of packets. Ah, okay. يعني قللوا العدد الباكيتس. So the steps are: أول إشي we capture only one packet, and we truncate the last byte and try to guess the value for the plain text. So من the last byte. We guess the value of the plain text and correct the checksum and send packet to AP to the access point. If the guess is correct, the access point will reply. Repeat until all bytes are uh, all bytes are are decrypted. Yani it's a matter of guessing the plain text and sending it, and uh, we know it's correct if the access point replies. Uh, عنا the PTW attack so احنا هلأ كم attack عنا عنا واحد اثنين ثلاثة أربعة خمسة okay um, okay hi they found even more correlations so they say it's a multibyte correlation uh, so that if we know the first L bytes the generated key stream and the next i bytes of the uh, uh, there's a correlation between the first l bytes and the next i bytes of the key so if i know the first byte i i will know the second byte zayhig if i know the second the first and second i will know the third and fourth if i know the the first second third and fourth i will know up to 8 يعني the 5th uh, 6th 7th 8th يعني it's kind of like a double uh, and then when I know the first 8 I can find 16 زي هيك أول إشي it captures back packets and recovers their key streams نفس ال FMS and the CORIC and evaluate the multibyte correlation function اللي هي based on Klein uh, I don't know what that is and create decision tree for key and start voting. I don't know what that is too. So it only requires يعني, 3, 35,000 to 40,000 packets. It takes only 60 seconds to crack a 104-bit web key.
So I think they crack a key. And here they crack a key. And we, we're going to assume this is static. It requires communication. What, what does static mean again? So here it's static, but they still uh, do take some packets. So I would say this is static. It requires any communication. So, in the web crack example, so to crack a web key uh, for an access point, we need to gather lots of initialization vectors. And normal network traffic does not typically generate these IVs quickly. So, we can gather sufficient IVs to crack the web key by simply listening to the network traffic and saving them. Since none of the uh, none of us are patient, we use a technique called injection to speed up the process. So I think Hadi, اللي بتكون from the general steps, like we inject some data, and uh, we listen to the. Okay, so injection involves having the access point resend selected packets over and over rapidly. So from the data packets, we can find what the initialization vectors are. So we have large number of IVs in a short period of time, and the web key can be determined using the previous techniques. Uh, okay, so this is a, an example of how the steps are. and. The techniques are these different techniques. So we have five, I think, different techniques. Could be the brute force, FMS, Coric, Coric Chop Chop, PTW, and this is how we crack the web. So the steps are, first of all, we start the wireless interface in monitor mode on the specific access point channel. Test the injection capability of the wireless device to the access point. Use AirPlay NG to do a fake authentication with the access point. Start air dumping on a access on access point channel with a BSSID filter. To collect the new unique IVs, start airplaying in ARP request to replay mode to inject packets. For, I don't know why HONA they do the same thing. HONA for fake authentication, HONA in ARP request, and what is an ARP request? And then we, the last thing, we run the air cracking to crack key using the IVs collected. Um, and just before, so the tutorial, هو أصلاً نزل الدكتور tutorial. I think, I don't know where it is. Hi, ha. So, and I, I, I'm not gonna read this one because. I don't know if it's it's really long and I don't have time as we can see the, the steps يعني, start the wireless interface in monitoring mode and then we test wireless device packet injection and then we air dumping to capture the initial initialization vectors aero dumping and then we use airplaying to do a fake authentication. Then we do air airplaying again in our ARP request replay mode. Then we run the air crack to obtain the web key 
from the initialization vectors. وهنا بقولنا ال ARP must receive at least one ARP package and so we have to receive an ARP package okay هلا عنا ال WPA attack I think ال WPA is like an improved web يعني they use it uh, يعني the WPA they don't use statistical methods to, to crack it لأنه they don't use correlation correlation is for the web they only brute force techniques against WPA and WPA2 because the key is not static that's the reason why they cannot use correlation uh, attacks so collecting IVs is like when cracking web encryption family uh, uh, does not speed up the attack فما رح نستفيد إشي من ال initialization vectors the only thing that does give information to start an attack is the handshake between the client and access point the four-way handshake اللي فهمتوا ان الفور-way handshake بيكون فيها information about the master key okay بيكون فيها information about the master key وهو اللي بنستخدمه عشان uh, to generate the other keys so I think المفروض يكون في handshaking أول شي عن ال brute force attack and dictionary attack um, so the pre-shared key can be from 8 to 63 characters so it's impossible to crack the pre-shared key. The only time if uh, it, it can be cracked if the if it is a dictionary word or relatively short in length. Uh, but eight to sixty-three is long. Uh, if you want to have an unbreakable wireless network at home, use WPA or WPA two. And a 63 character password composed of random characters including special symbols. As if you have special symbols, it's almost impossible to crack. The impact of having to use a brute force approach is substantial. What does substantial mean? So it's considered important. Okay. Because it is very compute intensive, a computer can only test 50 to 300 possible keys per second, depending on the computer CPU. It can take hours to crunch through a large dictionary. Okay, هلا عنا a cellular concept. Um, so uh, we have first mobile devices connect to a base station which connects to a backhaul network which connects to the internet Hadi is cellular concept so the network components are the network between mobile devices and base stations is the radio access network so the mobile device and the base station So, I think what connects these together is the radio access network. It slightly changes with new standards, okay. Base stations are permanent and base stations and the backhaul network are run by telco uh, but there are interconnections and shared sites 
عنا الأريدو customers need to be able to contact Vodafone and vice versa and base stations often connect to back hall via wired technology زي الفايبر so هنا we have wired technology via fiber ولا ايش مكتوب زي الفايبر uh, often communicate with each other via wireless يعني So, this base station connected uh, with a wire مع the back hall but different, uh, different base stations communicate with each other via wireless Now we have standards Now in the slides uh, 5 uh, we mentioned the GSM uh, and we don't know what the hell is the UMTS so they are just standards the same way CDMA is and these are all standards just like the LTE currently we are in the 4G LTE and the 5G so we also have 5G and I think the 5G uses only packet switching And also the 4G, I think the 4G is the the difference between the uh, new new uh, uh, networks or new, new 5G with 4G. In no, the 2G and the hadol al min abel, they used to use circuit switching and 3GPP2. Hadola, they they focus on clear voice and. They don't really care about data, data packets. But in the new generations, we care about the data packets and we use voice over IP, yani, uh, voice on top of the data uh, packets. Fa because now people care more about data packets and they don't care about the voice like before. Before it was all about calling and data packets was more luxurious. Um, okay, so Hadola standards. Um, I don't know what to say about them, but let's see what we have. Okay, so. Uh, Hadi, it's a milli circuit. Um, yani, okay, so 6G, we have 6G in my notes, and uh, 6G uses artificial intelligence. And we um, have a concept of cells, high cells, but uh, they divide the area into cells. And these cells organize uh, what your phone gets connected to. Thus, in the new generation is 6G. They use artificial intelligence to um, make access points, communicate with each other, and there's no concept of cell, cell, cells. Okay. 4G is, I think, is it supports more data. Uh, 5G supports more data rate than the 4G, but it's the same. And um, this, so this is the difference between packet switching is it focuses on data packets. The GSM, a global system for mobile communications, it's a 2G digital voice. So it's, it's voice, uh, it's not packet switching. And it uses the time division multiple access. Uh, so that it divides uh, time slots for each user and it operates at various spectrums and there are four separate systems we have the 
base station subsystem, the network subsystem, and the operations and support subsystem, and the mobile station subsystem. Each has a distinct purpose. The, the mobile station subsystem has the mobile handset and this SIM card, SIM card. Uh, that's, that's the thing with cellular. In, in cellular, unlike, um, unlike, um, unlike Wi-Fi, you need a SIM card. Okay, so not anyone can just enter the cellular, but anyone can enter the Wi-Fi. So, uh, the network subsystem, uh, okay, the base station uh, subsystem consists of a controller and a transceiver. Just one second. The base station subsystem. Uh, consists of a controller and a transceiver and the um, base station transceiver is a cell tower is the cell tower and the base station controller controls one or more base uh, base station transceiver BTS and uh, the housed and housed at mobile telephone switching office. Okay. In network subsystem, a mobile switching center and NTSO, the mobile telephone switching office. And the NTSO or the mobile telephone switching office switch connects cell network to PSTN ايش هذا ال PSTN so yesterday انا i downloaded the the pay, uh, the so مثلا if i find b a p t s let's put the space Okay, so PSTN. Okay, I'm gonna try the word PSTN. So it's underneath the network subsystem, uh, and it's it connects cell network to PSTN. What? Paging connects to the PSTN. All right, and uh, MTSO or the Mobile Telephone Switching Office houses the HLR, which supports the authentication center. Operations and support, the OSS, uh, manages the network as a whole. So manages the network as a whole. Bima fiha inno the area coverage and efficiency and uh, to change um, yani stuff like that. Yani as a matter of tower can very busy. or tower jambi can kteros kter el traffic ala walti. ممكن يعملوا تعديلات وهيك as a whole يعني they improve the efficiency so now we have the architecture diagram so we have the mobile station subsystem and then this is the I think the network the RNA radio network something like that let's go back The radio access network. So hi here radio access network. Let's just type here RNA and this is the base station. 
transceiver and this is the base station controller and this is the base station subsystem the controller connects to the MSC the let's see what the MSC is it's the mobile switching center And then the mobile switching center connects to the home, uh, home, or the authentication center. And the HLR, I forgot what that stands for. It sends the cipher key, a 128-bit random number, and an expected response to the base transceiver station. So it's a session encryption key. So high heat network subsystem, and apparently it connects to the operations and support system, which looks at the system as a whole. Now we ننتقل to GSM security. So the main security requirement is that we have to have a subscriber authentication for the sake of billing. And the challenge response protocol that we could call the first AKA. Long-term secret key shared between the subscriber and the home network operator. and supports roaming without revealing long-term key to the visited networks. Okay. Uh, other, and we're gonna study what roaming is later and what's meant by uh, without revealing the long-term key. This is the KI, I think. And the KC is revealed for roaming. Other security services provided by GSM, confidentiality of communications and signaling over the wireless interface. They use encryption key shared between the subscriber and the visited network. Shared between the subscriber and the, and the visited network is established with the help of the home network as part of the subscriber authentication protocol and it protects the subscriber's identity from eavesdroppers on the wireless interface and it uses short-term temporary identifiers so the subscriber identity module is the sim card it must be tamper resistant what's tamper resistant It must be resistant to interference and protected by a pin code is removable from the terminal contains all data specific to the end user which have to reside in the mobile station the IMSI who will international mobile subscriber identity I think it's the Rakam Ilijua SIM card و بيكون فيها البن بيكون فيها ال temporary mobile subscriber identity هاي it's the temporary identity and the KI is the user's secret key that's not shared ever KC is the ciphering key 
uh, list of all last call attempts, list of preferred operators, supplementary service data, they abbreviated dialing, uh, last short messages received. Okay, let's see this slide. It's the cryptographic algorithms of GSM. عندنا ال first thing uh, the SIM card أو the IMSI خلينا نشوف so it generates the random number and it also generates the it also contains يعني, the secret key and the random number and the secret key go into this encryption function and generate the signed response and the random number with the uh, initial uh, with the um, secret key I think this is the integrity key I'm not sure uh, KI K is secret key for the identity into the A8 function and uh, gives us the ciphering key and then we use the random number and we use these for authentication the S and the R for authentication and these triplets are known to the row uh, to the بنشوف بعدين نفرجيكم وآخر شيء هاي Ciphering Algorithm So A3 is for Subscriber Authentication Operator Dependent Algorithm and A5 is a Ciphering or Deciphering Standardized Algorithm and A8 is a Cipher Generation Operator Dependent Algorithm So, هاي هي ال roaming uh, وهاي هي ال triplets اللي شفناها هون So, احنا خلصنا ال sim cryptography هلا احنا now we want to authenticate the mobile okay عنا mobile it contains an IMSI or a temporary uh, mobile subscriber identity sends it to the visited network okay to make this clear let's say in you know, this mobile is subscribed to Uridu this is the home network it's Uridu and the visited network is Vodafone okay Anna I'm subscribed to Uridu and I visit Vodafone sometimes لأنه, uh, sometimes we have a, a um, يعني tower belongs to Vodafone and sometimes uh, I'm closer to the Vodafone's tower so what happens is the signal uh, of my SIM card uh, is sent to, to the visited network. Then the visited network will know that this IMSI belongs to Uridu and it will forward it to Uridu, the home network. The home network knows my uh, uh, identity key and the random number. Uh, it, it generates the random number and it, it uses these two values and uses the A8 ciphering, I think, ciphering, uh, cipher generation, and the A3 subscriber authentication to generate the uh, uh, S is the signed response and the cipher key. Then what it does is sends the triplets to the visited network, which is Vodafone, which is the ciphering, uh, the cipher key, uh, which. Um, uh, Vodafone doesn't know and cannot find and it also sends the signed response and also the random number generated so this is never sent the KI all right and then these triplets are forwarded back to the mobile station but actually it doesn't send back the the KC or the the S signed response the signed response and the cipher key is remains with the visited network and only the random number is is forwarded okay uh, 
So then the random number is used uh, in the same way. The exact same operation that happens here happens here because the mobile station already has the KI and uh, they do the exact same operation and uh, get the exact same cipher key. Yani it doesn't need to be sent. And the exact same signed response, which is not sent. And then it's uh, the mobile sends these two variables to, to the visited network. It sends the S to the visited network and the visited network will, will check is the S uh, signed response equal to the signed response sent by the home network. And if so, then authentication happens. So uh, I'm not sure why we have the KC here. Why is it sent to the visited network? I don't know why. So I guess maybe KC is sent to the visited network because it's used for ciphering. Yani, I don't know. صراحة. Anyways, we have the ciphering. Ah, okay. Now we have the ciphering. Okay. The sender, who will mobile station. Ah, okay. Or the network. Ah, okay. So it it can, the sender and the receiver can interchangeably be either the mobile station or the network. Okay. So so actually the same exact thing that happens here happens here. So now we understand why KC is known to the visited network, I guess, because it, uh, they use it for A5, uh, which is the ciphering algorithm, and they use the frame number to cipher, and then we have a ciphering sequence, and this ciphering sequence is XORed with the plain text to receive the ciphertext. And then only the ciphertext it is what goes uh, back and forth uh, sent uh, between the network and the mobile station. Okay. Okay, so it makes sense. Uh, conclusion for the GSM is that it's focused on air air interface. So I don't know what that means. It protects the air interface. No protection on the wired part of the network, neither for privacy nor confidentiality. And no visited network has access to all data except the secret key of the end user. Oh, okay, sorry. The visited network has, has known, it knows all the data except for the secret key, uh, which is the KI. Generally, it's robust, but few successful attacks have been reported, and uh, this is due to fake base stations and cloning of the SIM card. So this, these are also the threats to the GSM, is the cloning of the SIM card, and uh, man-in-the-middle attack because of the base station. Like here we have um, a fake base stations, Okay, so a cryptography paste is that it has short uh, keys and A5 over 2 efficient attack, A5 over 1 attack with large amount of pain text. In high cryptography uh, related to cryptography, oh, we have a weak cipher recognition re renegotiation and null cipher attacks possible. Allahu a'lam what this means. So we have a man in the middle attack uh, via uh, fake base station. And during AKA, which is challenge response uh, protocol, uh, the handset cannot authenticate the network. So we have a problem here in the challenge response protocol. And I also, by the way, I, I did explain the challenge response protocol in one of my videos about computer network security, computer network security. Um, 
only radio traffic is encrypted but in the back hall it is clear text so INSI sometimes sent in clear and some control signaling may be unprotected so هدول هم notable attacks black hat و defcon يعني I don't know يعني صراحة they uh, intercept GC, GSM signals with software defined radio showed a particular practical method to crack A5 over 1 so it's related to cryptography demonstrate a homegrown GSM BTS so Hadi it's based on creating a base station Uh, three GPP security principles uh, this I want to pray and then come back um, okay so Anna uh, the three GPP security principles uh, part one in uh, it's a second generation security principle based on GSM uh, uh, standard and it's a removable hardware security module so in GSM we have the SIM card and in 3GPP we use the universal SIM card so it's the user service identity module okay so USIM is the user services identity module and radio interface encryption it's limited trust in the visited network and it has protection of the identity of the end user especially on the radio interface and it has correction of the following weaknesses of the previous generation Okay, so uh, 3GPP is like an improved uh, standard of GSM and it actually uses the same second generation security principles but instead of the SIM card they use the user services identity module and they correct some of the weaknesses for example, the possible attack from, uh, attacks from fake base st stations and the cipher keys and authentication uh, data transmitted and clear between and within networks. So it corrects this and it corrects the encryption that's not used in some uh, networks and the data integrity that's not provided so the new security features are that they have content providers and HLR only service providers it has an increased control for the user over service profile uh, over their service profile yani more control for the user enhanced resistance to active attacks and it increases importance of non-voice services yani I think they mean the data packets they care more about the data packets than the voice So in the authentication and key agreement, we have the GSM triplets that are replaced by authentication vectors that have five elements. So authentication vectors. And these are the five elements. The random number, the expected response, the cipher key, integrity key, I think, and the authentication vector. So, oh, okay. 
AUTN is a token that authenticates the home network to the subscriber and proves the freshness of the random number. So random, rand is a random number generated by a pseudo-random generator and used as a challenge in the subscriber authentication protocol. Uh, so it's used as a challenge. Next, well, the expected response is the expected response to the random number, to ran to random number, uh, and the cipher key is an encryption key used between the mobile phone and the base station of the visited network. Both the expected response and the cipher key are computed from the random number and the long-term secret key, uh, K sub I, of the subscriber. IK is the integrity key and the AUTN consists of three fields. The sequence number uh, exhort with the anonymity key and the uh, AMF, the Anakrata B slides five and Sita. AMF is an authentication and key agreement field. Authentication and key management field, key management field, authentication management field. And the MAC is just the uh, message authentication code computed over RAND. SQN and the uh, AMF using the long term key K. So actually, the AUTN, uh, so actually, MAC depends on the sequence number, the AMF, and the uh, long term key. The authentication and key agreement, so the sequence number is, the, is maintained synchronously by both the subscriber and the home network. So I would say it's for synchronization. AK is the anonymity key and is used to hide the value of the sequence number from eavesdroppers. And the anonymity key is generated from the random key and K. I think K is the long-term key. The authentication management field is used to pass parameters from the home network to the subscriber, but is not fully specified in the UMTS standard. The Mac, I feel like we took this. <clears throat> so we have the mobile station. Ah, oh, hi, 3GPP. It's supposed to be the same as the GC GSM, but little different. So what happens is... المفروض ان الموبايل sends the the mobile sends the visited network the what okay so first of all the home environment بيكون عنا sequence number SQN with random number uh, they are used as inputs to generate the cryptographic material which is uh, and it also uses the user's secret key 
and produces the authentication vectors. The authentication vectors, which are the five authentication vectors, which are the random number, the expected response, the cipher key, integrity key, and the authentication token. And then sends them to the visited network. And then the visited network will send back the random number concatenated with the authentication token. And the mobile station will verify the authentication token and compute the response. Then, he has the secret key, and then he sends back the response to the visited network. Then, uh, the visited networks, which has the expected response, compares it with the response. And then, and then, they both have CK and IK. So how are the generation of this authentication vectors are made? Our issue بيكون عنا sequence number and the random number, and we have five different functions. The first function, all all functions take input the secret k and the sequence number and the random number. Okay. Actually, the sequence number is only used for the first function, and all functions take input the key and the uh, random number. The um, the authentication management field will be with the sequence number will be added to the function one to generate the message authentication code and the second function will generate the expected response which only needs the sequence number uh, sorry which only needs the random number and the key and also the cipher key only depends on the random number and the key and uh, likewise the integrity key and uh, likewise the anonymity key okay so the authentication token is equal to the sequence number XORed with the I think this is the anonymity key Hi AK is the anonymity key Okay, بعدين عنا ال authentication and key management field concatenated with the Mac. Okay, then we have the authentication vectors, which is the random number needed, and the expected response generated by the random number. Likewise, the cipher key and the integrity key, and finally the authentication token is. Generated first, then concatenated. So we said that for the three GPP, we use the universal service identity. What? The user service identity module. So again, we have the random number. <coughs> <coughs> uh, 
and how are we going to authenticate the user? We check the expected Mac is equal to the Mac and the sequence is in the correct range. Okay, so our issue on the authentication token. So had the authentication token. عنده لل في الموبايل ستيشن وعنده الراندوم نمبر اوكي ف فروم ذا اوثنتيكيشن توكن هي هاز ذس اند ذس اند ذس هلا هو هي وانتس ذا انونيمتي كي ما بده السيكونس نمبر فهي اكزورز ات وذ ذا سيكونس نمبر لا هي وانتس ذا سيكونس نمبر بس هي دزنت نو ذا سيكونس نمبر هي نوز ذا سيكونس نمبر اكزورد وذ ذا انونيمتي كي But the user already has the anonymity key because he has the random number and the anonymity key depends on the random number and the key which the user has. So in this case, we can obtain the sequence number simply by XORing it with the sequence number XOR the, um, the anonymity key. And then the sequence number will be used to generate the MAC And the expected Mac uh, should be equal to the Mac. Well, function 2, 3, and 4 are, are already يعني, the same here. Oh, ال, uh, um, authentication and key management field is used in function 1. We said function 1 it uses the sequence number and the AMF as inputs. في عنا two more functions are defined as F1 star and F1 F5 star used in case the authentication procedure gets desynchronized. Uh, oh hi, I think the sequence number, of course, will be the reason. If the sequence number changed to the reason, all of these are operator specific, and the 3GPP provides a detailed example of algorithm set called whatever. It's based on this block cipher AES. We know that this is a good block cipher. And I explained it in my cryptography, crypt, uh, applied cryptography videos. And uh, the generation of all seven functions is based on this algorithm. Okay, so hala anna authentication and key generation function F1 to F5 star. Okay, this is uh, it looks complicated for, uh, because we don't really have much time. Can we just skip? Because احنا already we know we need the random function as the random number. And we need the sequence number and the AMF for the first F1. So I don't know if this is... Oh, okay, this generates the F1 and F1 star. OP is operation specific parameter. R1 to R5 are fixed rotation constant. And C1 to C5 are fixed addition constants. And EK is the encryption block cipher. Okay, so now we have signaling integrity protection method. Uh, what is this? So we have a signaling message, integrity key, and a function. 
counter fresh random number I think and direction generating the Mac and this is the expected Mac also oh, it is a random input so this is the integrity protection method And this is the ciphering method. It has a bearer, which is a radio bearer identifier. I think it's kind of like a, a header, you can. And a count C is a ciphering sequence counter. And uh, length and a direction. And we have function F8 which provides us a keystream block which is exhorted with the plain text to give us a ciphertext block and uses the cipher key so this is using f8 and this keystream generator f8 uses the count number, the bearer, and the direction. I think Kasumi is just a, a function name, maybe like a hash function or something like that, or like a, some function, some standard function. And uh, we use the cipher key XORD with uh, what's KM key modifier to generate a register which is then used as an XORD at each so this looks like a uh, 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 sequential sequential it's each block and yeah, this block and yeah, this block depends on this block uh, it's sequential the only difference is the counter block counter and uh, this is a key stream so the key stream is generated in a sequential way Wow, okay, so the details of Kasumi. So it's uh, obviously it's uh, it's some standard function. Mm, okay. It looks like a reversible function. I know it's not a hash function. It's some sort of block cipher. Okay. Like the S boxes and the S hadola, they create uh, confusions. Yani they make it, it's like a matrix that makes things harder to break. To conclude, oh, this is the last slide. To conclude, uh, some improvements with respect to the second generation is the cryptographic algorithms and the integrity of the signaling messages is protected. Uh, it's quiet. It's quite conservative. It's a quite conservative solution. And the privacy and anonymity of the user is not completely protected. يعطيكم العافية if you watched all the video which is impossible. Bye!